the Transparency Advocacy for Development Initiative, has said the Register of Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, Isha Koloide is not qualified for the proposed National Merit Award, about to be conferred on him by President Muhammadu Buhari. The group said this is due to the various corruption allegations leveled against the Jambos, which is yet to clear his name. The group, led by its legal advisor Edward Omaga in a protest march to the presidential villa, this one is said, Oloyede should be immediately removed from the list of credible Nigerians to be awarded. We are saddened to let you know that JAMB and ICPC have connived to sabotage the vigorous efforts of the federal government to kill corruption before corruption kills Nigeria. Let me quickly point out before I end this address that on 26th of July 2022, a ministerial investigation into the activities of Professor Oloyode of JAMB was requested through a letter dated 26 July 2022 by Integrity and Transparency Watchdog after it, was, it has painstakingly unraveled massive corruption and gross abuse of office by the Registrar and Director of Finance and Accounts named Mr. Mafatua Alabi Bello. Though this letter was delivered to the Minister of Education, Malama Adamu, he refused to act, probably because Professor Loide is his long-standing friend when, when they were together at the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs. The acknowledgement copy of that letter that was sent to the Minister of Ed Education is attached to this letter to Mr. President. There are certain things that need to be clarified. Whether or not Professor Oluwede is involved in some fraudulent and corrupt practices such as follows. We are asking, was he involved in violation of Treasury single, Treasury single Account TSA guidelines? Was he involved in violation of Public Procurement Act as we have alleged these are things that the anti-corruption agency should investigate, the ICPC in particular? Was he involved in illegal recruitment exercises both in 2018 and 2021? The deliberate removal and intimidation of experienced personnel from office, especially the finance and accounts department in JAMB, was he involved in anything like that? What about undisclosure of revenue accruing to JAMB? Has it disclosed appropriately? And finally, the utilization of the 20% that is retained as operating surplus in JAMB. How has he utilized this and all of that uh, money?